Welcome to part six in our video series. This series is a, an advanced hormone tutorial series and in this particular video we're going to be talking about monitoring oral estrogens and we're going to of course touch on our test, the Dutch hormone test, a dried urine test for comprehensive hormones, but we're also going to be discussing, uh, as with all of these uh, videos, the application with oral estrogens in this situation with serum and saliva and traditional urine testing. So as we look at our testing matrix for oral estrogens, we just went through in the previous video oral progesterone which is fraught with all sorts of issues in terms of testing, whereas with oral estrogens it's actually quite different. Now we don't have an opinion or don't wish to express an opinion at least in terms of whether oral estrogens, whether that's a good way to take estrogens, but if a patient is on oral estrogens, how do we monitor it? That's the point of this video. And what we can see is there actually are a number of good options for monitoring oral estrogen. So take your pick. Whatever your test is for a baseline test, you should be able to use that test to follow up for oral estrogens. The rise and fall of estrogens following oral supplementation is nice and slow. So serum and saliva testing can be effective. Now that wasn't the case with progesterone. You've got in this study, we can see here's your baseline value. They take the hormone for a couple weeks, three weeks, and then now their baseline value 24 hours or like a day after their last dose is here. And then as they take it, it's a nice gentle up and down throughout the day. So if you test early on, later in the day, you should get about the same value. Now if we juxtapose that with progesterone, what we saw is that the values went up and down, and there are some other complications there, but the actual progesterone went up and down very fast. Now if you come back in, let's change colors here, if you come back in on day 21 with oral progesterone, your baseline likely has not changed. It's going to go up and down the same way. There's really nothing there to measure effectively in serum or in saliva. And I would encourage you to watch that video because if you haven't, it's much more complicated than that if you're using oral progesterone and serum or saliva testing because it's really problematic. Uh, but what we find with the estrogens are a couple of things. One, we're going to make a whole lot of estrone sulfate, which is going to act as uh, in sort of a storage form of hormone. The other thing that we're going to make is we're going to make estradiol and the other estrogens as well, but glucuronides. Those are phase two conjugates, and those can then be excreted in the urine. What, what happens is the gut bacteria can come in and cleave that conjugation, leaving estradiol to recirculate as estradiol. What that results in, both of those things, the estrone sulfate, the recirculation, is it's a lot slower to get rid of the estrogen, which is why you have this elevated baseline 24 hours after testing and why you have this nice gentle curve. At the end of the day, it makes testing much more effective than with progesterone. So testing in serum, testing in saliva should be reasonably effective. Now, in urine testing, the added benefit is you get the metabolites. So here's a patient who's taking estrogen. So you can see they have elevated levels of estrone. Now, why is that? Well, because we've built up all that estrone sulfate, that's going to be reflected in the urine, whereas the estradiol is a little bit lower. It's right down the middle of normal. But then what we can look at is we can also look at the downstream metabolites. So we've got 16 hydroxyestrogens, 4 hydroxyestrogens, and 2 hydroxyestrogens. So what you'll notice is there's not a lot of 2 hydroxylation going on and that's usually not considered a good thing. So um, if you take something like methane or indole 3 carbonyl it's really going to push the estrogens more down this 2 hydroxy pathway which is going to give you more favorable metabolism but it's also going to probably pull down this E1 and E2 a little bit. The reason the metabolites are relevant is if you look at this study you can see women at high risk for breast cancer, women with breast cancer, they've got a whole lot more of something than the healthy controls. And what that something is, is this right here. The making of estrogen metabolite DNA adducts. So the pairing of that estrogen metabolite with DNA. What happens is the 4-hydroxyestrogens make a quinone. That quinone is very reactive and it can actually break a piece of the DNA off. And that 
has been shown to happen more prevalently in breast cancer, but also in men with prostate cancer, and there are some other cancers that are related. But we don't want to see that 4-hydroxy predominate, and we want to see this 2-hydroxy increased to a, a much higher degree relative to the 4. So this is not a great profile for this patient, and that's the extra information you get with urine testing. So urine testing can be done, but it has to be done carefully. Why is that? Because if you take hormones orally, you're going to get a whole lot of hormone that's going to go into the mouth, into the gut, get metabolized, and go into the urine, having never been in systemic circulation. So that's going to happen pretty heavily on the day of supplementation. So if you don't skip the dose the day of the test, then you're going to have just really some really big numbers that don't have a lot of relevance. Like you can still look at the metabolism. Am I making more 2, more 4, more 16 hydroxyestrogens? But if you just think about the E2 value, that E2 value is going to be bloated that first day because of first pass metabolism. That number is not useful. So if you skip it the day of the test, typically all that first pass metabolism is going to clear out and as we just showed from the serum testing, the estrogens are going to stay high for at least another 48 hours and even longer. And so then that second day where you haven't taken the hormone for, for uh, 24 hours is going to give you a good idea of what's going on systemically, but then also give you an idea of metabolism. So you really have some good options with oral estrogens if that's how you choose to go with your supplementation. So now as we go into the, these next videos, we're going to be looking at vaginal hormones, uh, patches, injections, pellets, sublinguals, transdermals. And a lot of times that's given because people don't want to take oral estrogens. You want to avoid that liver metabolism. And those are some good options. But the, what comes with them is some caveats for the hormone testing. And so we're going to show that in the next part. So I would encourage you to continue watching those for a more comprehensive overview of HRT and laboratory testing.